October 1944. American soldiers walk and look at the trees around them. Daylight barely penetrates their tops. They've been here for a month and still can't get used to it. Suddenly, an explosion breaks the silence. A few meters from where they are, a mine has just killed a colleague. It is the third in the day, but they must continue towards the town they must capture, even though they know that the enemy is lurking in the dark and can annihilate them at any moment. These men are in the middle of the battle of the Hurtgen Forest. A series of clashes on German soil that began to define the Western Front of World War II. But why was this such a disastrous battle for the Allies? We'll find out the answer to this question in this new episode of Military History. Are you ready? Then prepare to travel back in time. By September 1944, the Allied advance in Europe had stalled. Gone were the conquests on the African continent and Italy, the Normandy landing, and the liberation of Paris. Furthermore, Operation Market Garden, an offensive that aimed to end the war before Christmas, had been a resounding failure. So, a new idea was needed. But the problem was great and had a name. Siegfried Line. The fortified corridor covered the entire western German border. What defenses did it have? From 18,000 bunkers with MG-42 and MG-34 machine guns, anti-tank traps, anti-aircraft guns, trenches, tunnels, minefields, and concrete obstacles, to teams with Panzerfaust, hills, and a good amount of heavy artillery. This included the Nebelwerfers, imprecise but terrifying mortars. Therefore, the American generals Dwight Eisenhower and Omar Nelson Bradley met with the British Bernard Montgomery and decided that seven Allied armies would advance east. There were the U.S. 1st, 3rd, 7th, and 9th Army, along with the Canadian 1st Army, the British 2nd Army, and the French 1st Army. The goal was to capture the industrial centers and dikes of the Ruhr and Saar regions, and also to take an area that would make it impossible for the Germans to reinforce the northern flank the Hurtgen Forest. The area was filled with rows of fir trees over 100 feet tall, along with many other scattered trees. Near the streams and ravines, the sun's rays barely entered. I have never seen a forest as dense as Hurtgen. It was the worst place of all, wrote an American soldier about the site, which was just over 120 square kilometers. On September 14th, the first phase of attacks began with more than 120,000 U.S. soldiers against around 80,000 Germans under the command of Field Marshal Walter Model. Soon, the Allies realized they were in a nightmare. By October 16th, they had only advanced three kilometers at the cost of 4,500 casualties, and the 2nd Battalion of the 60th Infantry Regiment had been reduced to a third of its strength in just one day. It was true that the 1st Army, commanded by General Courtney H. Hodges, had managed to capture the key city of Aachen, but it had also been a terrible confrontation, with more than 5,000 losses. For its part, the 9th Division had taken five days to advance just one kilometer. The latter was still far from its objective. Schmidt, a town that would remain in German hands until February 1945, the 28th Division would come to their aid in October with a battalion of Sherman tanks, but the Lamb was not suitable for armored vehicles, so their offensive suffered delays and counterattacks that decimated it. The replacements would be untrained men, including some from the Air Force. Artillery, aviation, and mobility were almost completely nullified thanks to terrain underestimated by the Americans. No one had calculated well the unevenness of the mountainous Eiffel region, the rugged valleys or the gusts of air between trees, nor the rain, fog, mud, or snow that would transform the battle into a veritable carnage. Also, hills like 554 generated a large number of casualties when attacked. The fortifications and determination of a Wehrmacht that had time to regroup did the rest together with its unexpected minefields and barbed wire. In fact, the 116th Panzer Division was present, and in the middle of it all was the writer and journalist Ernest Hemingway, who was blunt. 
It was an extremely difficult place to survive, even if all a man did was just be there. Also, the forest caused claustrophobia and doubts in men. And meanwhile, enemy snipers were taking advantage of the darkness. Furthermore, the 2nd Battalion of the 112th Infantry Regiment was considered virtually destroyed, as had happened to other units. Between the slowness of the replacements and the shortage of supplies, the situation became so untenable that two battalions trapped in the town of Kamerscheidt decided to retreat, even leaving behind their comrades maimed by artillery. One doctor claimed that examining a badly injured person felt like putting a hand in a bucket of wet liver. It was evident that the Germans did not have an inferiority complex, as the Allied High Command believed. Although they were weakened and had serious logistical problems, their experience with tactics and forested areas made up for their deficits. Still, General Hodges insisted on capturing Schmidt and the forest to reach the Rohr River. But experts point out that he should have had that determination towards the Seven Dams on the river or Hill 400, vital points to control the area and prevent the Germans from flooding the roads. Herkin was one of the most costly, unproductive, and ill-advised battles of our army. General James Gavin, commander of the 82nd Airborne Division during the war, said in 1979, Although the second phase, Operation Queen, began on November 16th, the Americans would be far from fulfilling their objectives. Now, with the 4th Infantry Division fully deployed, and the participation of the V Corps due to the ineffectiveness of the V2, a month was enough to understand that there was no way to establish a bridgehead over the Ruhr. Two companies took the town of Merod, but a counterattack eliminated them. Later, the 2nd Ranger Battalion had to intervene to relieve the 112th Infantry Regiment and take Hill 400. However, neither that nor the taking of the cities of Gay and Strass caused any changes. And to make matters worse, the Germans were blowing up the trees. Shrapnel, splinters, and wood fell on the unsuspecting soldiers. There were even units that had 100% casualties. After more than three months of bloody confrontation, on December 16th came the end of the battle. Between 33,000 and 55,000 American soldiers had lost their lives directly and indirectly throughout six infantry divisions. 28,000 troops had perished on the side of the Third Reich. But Adolf Hitler was unable to seize the opportunity because he would spend his last resources on the Ardennes counteroffensive. Although surprising and effective at the beginning, the Allies defeated it in January 1945. Later, they would definitively break the Siegfried Line without returning to Hürtgen. Despite heroic gestures, commemorative plaques, and battles won, the outcome of this battle produced worse figures than those of D-Day and made it one of the most devastating on the Western Front. Now, we invite you to take charge and answer this question. What would you have done to break the Siegfried Line? Leave us your comment below. We also invite you to subscribe and activate notifications to learn about many more military events that left their mark on history. Thank you very much for joining us, and until the next video.